Hi and welcome to the in-depth guide to tone mapping. Tone mapping is one of my favorite new features in Deep Glow 2 and it's super important, not just to glows, but anytime we're working with values greater than one, which if you're like me is pretty much all the time. So here I have this super bright, super aggressive glow. And let's just hypothetically say that we're happy with this and we want the world to see this the way it currently appears in After Effects exactly. So we think to ourselves, okay, I'm working on an 8-bit monitor, therefore if I save it as an 8-bit file, such as a JPEG or an MP4, and we publish that on the internet, everyone's gonna see it exactly the same. And we would be completely wrong. So let's go ahead and do that. Now let's inspect that. And we can see, hmm, it looks similar, but it doesn't look as bright. If we zoom in here, we'll be able to see exactly why. Let's compare that. We lost the really hot core, almost like the lightsaber effect that we would otherwise. Now, why is that? Well, essentially, what saving it to an 8-bit format is doing is applying an adjustment layer, adding a levels effect, and setting this clip output white on. And we get the exact same effect here. If we take a screenshot of that, it's basically what we're getting with our 8-bit format. So I've got Lumetri scopes over here. And we can see that we have a lot of HDR values. And this is logarithmic, by the way. So these are very bright. And when we apply this levels adjustment, we are just cutting them off at the neck. And the neck happens to be anything above a value of 1.0. And that's why we get this particular result. So instead of just cutting it off, what can we do instead? Well, that's exactly what tone mapping aims to solve. Instead of just cutting it off, it will apply an easing curve to bring those incredibly high super bright values down to a value below one. Let's go to deep glow here and let's see what we have. So under tone mapping, we have a bunch of different algorithms. There is no right or wrong algorithm. These are just the most popular ones. And let's turn on ACES Filmic here. And we can see that instead of it just getting cut off at a value of one, we have a more gradual curve. Now that did change the visual appearance of our image. And we'll get to that in a bit later. But let's just go ahead now and save that as an 8-bit file and compare it. And like all good artists, we will save it to the desktop and deal with the consequences later. 8-bit tone map, let's bring it in. And we can see that it's not exactly the same as the HDR value, but it's pretty close. Now, the reason for why it's not exactly the same is actually to do with the plugin itself. And that's because we're compositing this source on top of the tone mapped result. And that just ensures that your input doesn't receive the tone mapping in case you didn't want it. Now, in this case, we do want the input to receive the tone mapping. So what we can do is instead of applying the tone mapping here, set that to none, we can add an adjustment layer call it tone mapping. And we have a preset for this. It's called the Deep Glow 2 Tone Map Utility. And what that will do is that it will tone map everything. And because this is sitting on top of the glow, which has the source opacity at 100%, it is therefore also tone mapping the input composited back onto the glow. So let's go ahead and save this. Okay, we've just imported that. And now we can see that this is exactly the same as what we had. Our 8-bit PNG is outputting precisely the way that we want it. And we can see that in the Lumetri scopes, well, yes, it's 8-bit, so obviously it has a lot less detail, but otherwise the pattern is exactly the same. Now, as I mentioned before, when we apply this tone map, it changes the visual result a little bit, and this may or may not be exactly what you want. We can see the fall off is sort of bunched up a little more. It doesn't carry as far. So if we weren't happy with that, we can actually compensate for that a little bit in the glow itself. So coming to the original glow under gamma correction, I'm gonna boost this up a little bit just so that the fall off travels a bit further. That might be a bit much and that will compensate for some of the effects that the ACES tone mapping is having here. Speaking of which, we have a bunch of different ones so you can go through those. They each have slightly different um, characteristics to them. Habel preserves more of the fall off. Reinhardt has an even softer look. Reinhard 2 is similar to Reinhard 1, but it has an extra check for super HDR values, which we've hard coded internally to over four. So if you have extreme HDR values, that might handle better. And then we come down to the curly haired stepchild of tone mapping called Clamp Chroma. If we tick that, we'll see the result is completely different to what we had previously. And I'll explain why that is. So let's turn off the tone mapping. Let's come back to this and I'm gonna turn off thick stroke, come to the layer itself and let's make this just red. Now, if we make the text a bit thicker, we can see we have this very hot result. And again, if we save this to an 8-bit format without any tone mapping applied, 
we get back this incredibly ugly result because decapitated the HDR values and it just looks like this great disgusting stroke. What Clamp Chroma is doing is essentially taking this composition, applying an adjustment layer, setting that to the luminance of the original composition, not alpha, luminance, and then it applies a tint. And a tint of 100 essentially creates this hot core for us, except it makes it white. And a value of zero is back where we started with any value in between a happy medium of the two. So let's say we wanted it at a value of maybe 30%. I usually go between 10 and 20% because the more we increase this, the more we lose our super hot HDR values. So a value of 20% will then allow us to save this as an 8-bit image and still retain these values when we export it. So that is essentially what Clamp Chroma is doing, but in a convenient tone mapping operation. And here we have the mix value. In future, I think we will allow this to go above 100% for all the modes, but currently it's capped between zero and 100. So for Clamp Chroma, you'd probably wanna set it to maybe a value of 20%. Coming back to Aces Filmic here and setting it to 100%, I will go back to the color that we had and what's really cool about Aces Filmic is that it does as it says on the tin, it gives the result quite a soft filmic look. To demonstrate that, I'm gonna open up a composition from the promo video, this being the opening shot of the promo video. And what I actually did in the promo video was combined clamp chroma with two copies of the Aces tone mapping. So essentially three copies of tone mapping. Let's go through one by one and see how that impacts the result. So let's turn on the clamp chroma, which I had set as a mix to 33% strength. And you can see that the higher that we crank this, it helps give us a hot core, but if we go too far, we really lose the saturation that made it beautiful in the first place. So I'd set it to a value of 33%. And then we come along and we add aces at 100% mix. And that adds this more filmic quality that I think really works with the style of the 80s grunge sci-fi look. And then coming in again, adding another aces filmic at 100% really sells that look. Now you might say, oh, I've gone too far. That's probably fair. Um, another thing I did was increase the offset value to bring the blacks from pitch black to say a, a slightly gray value and then bump up the film grain a lot so that we get this really gritty looking result. So tone mapping can be a stylistic choice, not just, oh, I need my HDR values to display correctly, therefore I need to apply it. I was essentially creating my filmic look through cranking the shit out of tone mapping to give it this look. So it's very versatile and I recommend using it anytime you have HDR values because it's gonna allow you to share those with the world exactly as you intended it.